So feet hip width apart, toes straight ahead, and allow your ankles, knees, hips, and shoulders to line up, shoulders back and down, and cram to the ceiling. And just take a moment to get situated into your feet, evenly distributing your weight, spreading your toes, and breathe. So let the belly move as you breathe, but remember, ribs in and up so that core is still supporting your spine. And then focusing inward, bring your arms out to the side at shoulder level, stretch your fingertips out. Exhale, hands to your heart, stretch way out to the front, and exhale your hands behind you. Fingertips clasp and lift your heart. Get that spine stretching open while it's back bending. And then pivot at your hips coming over as you exhale. So just take a moment there and breathe. You can bend your knees if you want. And lift your sitting bones. Take a few breaths there. And then with your chin in, work your way up, just slowly coming, unwinding into that, again, upper body back bend. Shoulders down, head back, and lift your heart. Inhale, upright, release your arms, and just take a moment, feeling the circulation. And again, inhale to shoulder level, exhale to your heart, stretch to the front, and exhale, clasping the other way with those fingers behind you. Lift your heart again, stretch your head back, and pivot at your hips, exhale over. And again, just hang there, breathing, letting that lower back begin stretching out. And then chin in, winding up, and heart up, shoulders down, stretch your spine, and breathe. Inhale back upright, and release. Take a few moments there, just feeling all that circulation internally. And we'll do our side stretch. So arms out, palms toward the ceiling, and over your shoulders. Pass your hands, and turn them around to clasp. Arms up by your ears and whole body facing forward. Lean to the side without twisting. And then the foot you're leaning away from, press it down a little bit more so those ribs get a little extra stretch. Take a few breaths. Just relax. And then inhale back up. Keep your shoulders down as you switch the other hand in front. And again, pull your arms back near your ears. Stretch up and straight, then lean to the opposite side. Take a few moments there as you breathe, pushing that other foot down and feeling those ribs open. And again, inhale back upright and release. Take a moment feeling your spine as we forward bend, backward bend, side to side. So next we'll twist. So remember, base of the skull, base of the spine, really stretch them apart so we've got room to twist. Arms out, shoulders, palms to the ceiling, arms over your shoulders, and then clasp your elbows. Again, keep your arms near your ears, keep the weight on both feet evenly, stretch up and open your spine, and twist. Take another breath, and as you exhale, pivot over. So just deepen into your forward bend here. Relax. Keep the weight on both feet as much as you can. And then staying in your twist, arms still by your ears, work your way back up in the twist and look overhead. Lift your heart, but remember, no pressure in your low back while you're twisted, coming into that back bend. So really lift your heart, upper body back. And then inhale up, exhale around to the center, switch your arms around, and again, straighten it out, arms near your ears, stretch it up, and exhale to the other twist. Lengthen and breathe, and pivot as you exhale. And again, just deepen as far as you'd like while you're twisting. Take a few breaths there, just relax. And then slowly as you inhale, work your way up, 
And again, looking toward the ceiling, coming into the upper body for your back. Take a moment to pull the elbows back and lift your heart as you breathe. And then inhale upright again and exhale around to the center. Arms up, shoulder level. Let's keep them there, stretching up in extended mountain. So your shoulders and shoulder blades are down. The ribs are toward your spine and up toward your heart. Sitting bones toward the floor, shoulder blades toward the floor. Fingertips and crown reaching high. And distribute your weight evenly into your feet. And then pivot the arms out to shoulder level, palms toward the floor, T position. And pivot again at your hips, come parallel to the floor and stretch everything out straight. And then drop into ragdoll and just head. So take a moment there as you breathe. Lift your sitting bones if you'd like. A little more stretch on your hamstrings. And relax. And then slide your hands up on your shins right under your knees. Press in with your hands and straighten your elbows and your legs and your back. Keep that chin tucked a little bit toward your chest, remember, so the back of your neck stretches as well. And then drop back to right down. Pull in a little bit more if you'd like with the hands behind your legs. And then arms back to the front, hanging as you wind back all the way up. And shoulders up, back, and down and coming into mountain pose. So take a moment feeling your spine a little bit more activated and energized. And then we're gonna keep that opening through the spine for our twist as we just swing gently. So remember as you do this, just follow your hands around, looking at them as you go each side. And as it gets easier, as that spine warms up, Go a little further at each end of that circuit looking behind you. And then back to the center and the backstroke and swimming, working your shoulders. Keep breathing, shoulders down, crown high. And then again, both arms up. And we'll do that side stretch. So come up on one side with the arm and then the opposite heel rises. So you're on the toe only, but the other foot is flat that you're stretching the side up. And then exhale down, inhale the other side up. And again, coming up on the toe with that opposite foot. Exhale and release. Inhale, one more stretch on the first side. Exhale down, inhale up on the second. So again, just feel those ribs stretching way apart. Lateral stretch through the oblique. And then both feet down, arms up, stretch it high in that extended mountain. And then again, pivoting forward, swan diving this time, chest and chin lead, tuck the chin back in. Stretching out really long, and then drop into that. Take a moment to walk your hands over to one side and a little twist. And then exhale back to the center. Lengthen again and twist to the other side. And again, exhale back to the middle. And wind back slowly back. Shoulders back and down. And again, mountain pose. Feel your body just stretch up through the ground. Keep breathing, feeling that belly move. And then moving your feet together, bend your knees toward your toes, not beyond. So we don't want to overdo those knees. Hands above your knees, don't press, just position with them, support only with your feet. And then circle your knees. So nice big circles, getting those ankles and feet moving around, as well as the knees and hips. So your lower body is working. And then stop and go the opposite circle. Working again with those whole bottoms of your body, feet, legs, 
and hips. And then stop in the middle, find your spot for balance on the floor or at eye level, and then just come up onto the base of your toes, lifting your heels, getting that balance. Spread the toes, remember, don't work with them or you lose that connection. And then we're gonna roll back and forth a few times for the bottoms of the feet. And those toes and arches and ankles working. And then coming back into mountain pose, just take a moment adjusting to your feet hip width apart. Get everything stretched and straightened. And again, either clasping your elbows or hands to prayer behind your shoulder blades. Bend your knees toward your toes, not beyond. And then circles with your hips for your lower back. So nice big circles. Hips and pelvis moving. Knees and feet moving. Notice that whole lower body working. And then stop and go the other way. And again, just as much or a little in that circle as you'd like, but remember, don't overdo those knees pushing forward. And then releasing back up and into mountain pose, feeling the circulation through the whole body. Let's do a pelvic tilt. So. Once again, turn the toes a little bit out, bend your knees toward your toes, not beyond, and hands above position, no support. And then sitting bones go back and chest forward, coming into that back bend. So just really opening through the heart. And then exhale, and pull the ribs back as you round forward into that forward bend. So remember, knees stay where they are and the shoulders stay pretty much right above your feet as well. Just moving the spine, moving the pelvis into the back bend and then into the forward bend. So inhale toward the back bend, exhale, tucking the chin and coming into the forward bend. So through your range of motion, just letting your spine work, your hips work, your whole body go through its particular range of motion. And then the next time you're in the forward position, just pause and stand back into mountain pose. And again, just take a moment feeling all that circulation through your spine. Notice your breath and relax your shoulders. Oh, and it's time for our balance practice. So go ahead and find your favorite balance foot. Lift those toes, get the base of the toes connected. Remember if you're on a mat or a rug, you can step off onto a harder surface if you want to. Spread the toes, don't grip with them or you lose that base of support. Keep the arch lifting, the whole outside of your foot connecting and make sure your ankle, knee and hip line up with your shoulder. So you may need a little inner rotation to get that ball stacked for support. Get your bottom ribs toward your spine and up so that core is supporting your lower back and reach the crown to the ceiling as you pick that other foot up. And remember again, a little inner rotation so the foot doesn't cross over. And then when you get it as high as you want, and you can still be close to the floor. Circle both ways with your ankle. Flex and point a few times, getting those ankles lubricated and flexible. And then back into mountain pose. Take what worked and shift it over and improve what you need to. So really get the base of the toes connected, get that whole bottom of the foot down, and the whole body stacked for support, making sure that all the bones are aligned for that. Core activated, crown reaching up, get that spine nice and open as you bring your other foot up. And again, a little or more, pull it in if you want, but make sure that it's not crossing over the other side and work your ankle. Circles both ways. Flex and point a few times and release. 
So as you get back into your mountain pose, just take a few moments to focus inward, noticing how that practice works. And then bringing your arms out to shoulder level, we'll work on the shoulders a little bit. Palms toward the ceiling, spreading your fingers and big circles. And then making them smaller. So remember your crown is reaching way up, your ribs are in and up, your sitting bones and shoulder blades are down and the fingertips are reaching out. And then stop the circle, stretch it out and turn your palms toward the floor and circle the arms the other way. And again, maximize as much or as little as you'd like on this side. And then again, smaller circles, just keep everything reaching out in all directions. And then coming to the stop, Keep the hips and feet where they are and just reach to one side, getting that stretch along the ribs. Back to the center, go over to the other side. And then back to the center and stretch, palms to the ceiling, inhale, look up, palms together. Exhale, hands to your heart, pivoting all the way over. And red dog, one more time. So sitting bones lifting, tucking your chin, just hang, letting that spine get good lengthening. And then one more time, let's roll up and into neck and pose. As you get there, just take a moment feeling how your body is working this time. And then stretching up, let's go to the floor. So pivot on over into child's pose. Hips back on your heels, hands next to your feet and forehead toward the floor. Just deepen, knees together for that low back stretch or knees apart for a little bit easier breathing, your choice. Take a few breaths and relax. And then inhaling, go ahead and sit up and we're gonna come into staff position. So legs out in front. Sitting bones connect, just kind of push them a little bit behind you. So you're in that little pelvic opening. Knees up, toes up, crown to the ceiling. Core activated and supporting you, shoulders relaxed. Everything ready, just in staff position. And we're going to bring one foot up to your other thigh and let the knee be out to the side. And then a hand on it just for weight to let that knee come further toward the floor. If it's really tight, remember, you can put a little padding behind you to tip into that pelvic tilt, or you can move your front leg over to the side, but keep the knee and toes up. That'll bring the knee down more as your pelvis opens a little bit differently. Anyway, breathe and relax. Feel that hip getting a little bit more movement. And then we're gonna put, pick the foot up, hold on to it or pull it in with your arms and just move back and forth, getting your hip rotator outside of your hip, getting lubricated in the long jump. And then release that foot and back into staff position. And bring the other foot up because we need to balance that out. So again, the knee can come down. Notice one side may be tighter than the other, so you may need to get more pelvic opening with the foot moving over or that padding behind you. And again, just relax as you're there. You can have the hand giving a little weight, but don't be pressing. We don't want to overwork the muscles because then they start to resist and they don't do as well as they would flexibly if you relax. And again, we're just going to bring the foot up and move it back and forth. Pulling it in as close as you'd like. The closer you get it, the more intense it's going to be in that hip rotator. So be gentle if you need to. And then release back into staff position. We're going to go up into table position. So come on up on your hands and knees. And remember, knees under your hips, feet straight back. Wrists, elbows, and shoulders lined up. 
We're going to do a pigeon pose. So get those bottom ribs up supporting your lower back. And then take your right knee between your hands and slide the foot slightly over to the left side and then slide your left leg back behind you and get this hip flexor on your left leg stretching a little bit. So as you're in this position, you'll be up off the floor probably with your right hip, that's fine. If you wanna go a little bit further, you can take the right knee over toward the right side and pull the right foot so that the shin gets more perpendicular to your body and then just sink both hip bones straight down to the floor. Chest forward and up, crown to the ceiling, getting a little bit more back bend and stretch through that left hip flexor and just relax through this right hip rotator. If you want a little bit easier, you can slide your hands forward, come down on your forearms, but don't go all the way to the floor because that can overdo the hips and knees. So just chest forward and up, hips sinking evenly toward the floor. Take a breath, look forward. If your hands are to the front, bring them back under your shoulders. And again, just stretch through your whole spine. And then press into your hands, pull that right knee back and the left knee up and back into table position. So take a moment there, just feeling how that worked through your hips and legs. And of course, we're gonna balance the body and do the opposite side. So again, left knee this time between the knees, slide the right leg back, sink down as much as you like. And remember, you can put padding under that hip on your upper side if you'd like. And then bring the left knee over toward the left and slide that left foot further forward if you want a little bit more intensity, but don't do it if you don't. And then again, get those hip bones even sinking down toward the floor, chest forward and up, maximizing, or hands sliding forward, forearms to the floor, or a little bit gentler, stretch. And again, just breathe there and relax. Chest forward, crown up, and shoulder blades down. And then sliding your hands back if you slid them forward, right under your shoulders again, chest forward, looking up, sinking through the hips. And this time we're just gonna bring that back hip around, leg around, slide off to the left side, bring the legs into stacked position. So as you get into your stacked lock position, just feel those hips relax where they were maximizing and stretching. Take a moment to reach your crown to the ceiling. Feel that core activated and breathe. And then we're gonna release the legs and bring them back into stacked position. So just press out through the bottoms of your feet. Knees up toward the ceiling, sitting bones a little behind you, remember, and crown up. Get the core activated, really stretch up through your spine. We're gonna bring one foot up to the inner thigh and knee out to the side. And then we're gonna take the other leg, heel near your hips and knee to the front. And then turn toward that first knee, hold it, and bring the other arm out in front of you. We're gonna deepen into a twist here. So sitting bones as much down toward the floor as you can and lift up through your spine, opening it. And then this hip on that second foot you moved can be up as you exhale around, arm behind you. Bring it to the floor, close to you on the floor, stretch up through the spine, and then as you exhale, turn more. So this back hip is lifting a little bit so that you're not overworking that lower back, but you're turning your back at your hips, at your ribs, and at your shoulder coming into the twist. Take a breath, lengthening. Exhale, deepen. And then release the arm behind you back up to shoulder level. Follow it back around to the center. Release your arms and your legs back into stack position. 
So feel that twist energy. And we're of course gonna to twist to the other side. So the first foot comes up to the inner thigh, knee up to the side, push those sitting bones a little bit back. Bend your other knee, heel near your hip, knee straight to the front. Stretch up and twist, exhaling. So remember the whole body is lengthening into the twist. And again, that opposite hand stays on your knee. The other arm comes out to the front. And we're going to maximize the twist even more by stretching the spine open and exhaling, following that hand around behind you. Bring it to the floor close to your body. Stretch up, lift this back hip slightly off the floor. And then hips, ribs, shoulder, everything turn and deepen as you twist. So, of course, personal practice, only going as far as it feels right for your body. Take a breath. Exhale, maximizing as much or as little as your body needs. And then bring that hand behind back to shoulder level. Follow it around and release. Release in front as you release both feet back into staff position. Take a moment there, feel your body, stretch up through the crown, and breathe. And then bring the bottoms of your feet together into butterfly, knees out to the side. Just pull those heels in as much as you'd like, and let those knees come out toward the sides, letting that inner thigh get a little bit of a stretch. Crown to the ceiling, take a moment to breathe. And then hands behind you one at a time, right under your shoulders behind you. Fingertips or palms, whatever's good for you. And then lift your heart, stretch your spine, and look overhead. So a nice chest opener. As you exhale, kind of turn the bottoms of your feet toward the ceiling, and maybe let those knees come a little closer toward the floor. Take a few moments there, just breathing and raising your heart. And then chin back towards your chest and bring those hands back to your feet. Slide the feet a little bit forward, hands underneath. Pull your chest toward your feet, tops of um, palms on the tops of your feet. And then just let those legs sink down into your forearms, knees toward the floor. And sitting bones back as you tuck your chin a little bit toward your chest and reach your crown toward your toes. So lengthen your whole back, take a breath. Exhale, kind of pull your body closer toward your feet. And then release your hands, lift your head, sitting back up and lift your knees back into staff position. Take a moment there, feeling your body and get ready for our final twist and relaxation. So again, starting in core activated staff position, keep that core working for you to release slowly onto the floor. Take a moment there and breathe, reclined integration, and relax. I'll just do our bent knee twist. So bring your arms to T position, either palms up or down, your choice. Remember, palms down, keep those shoulders a little bit more stable if you need that. Sitting bones toward your heels, back on the floor, bend your knees, heels in near your sitting bones, knees straight up. And then get that lower back connected, lift your feet off the floor, knees right above your hips. Arms still straight up from your shoulders. And then we're going to roll the knees to one side and just turn, looking over the opposite shoulder. So keep the shoulders and shoulder blades down for that middle back twist. Turn your head to one side for that neck and shoulder twist. And the knees come toward the floor or all the way down for that lower back. So just going as deeply as you'd like. You can keep your knees above the floor, feet off the floor, or bring your feet down or your knees all the way to the floor. Just up to your body how deeply you go in that lower back area. Take a breath, just relax. And when you're ready to release always, just bring your heels toward your hips first as you roll onto your back. 
You can stay there or you can bring your feet to the floor or reposition if you need to. And then again, knees right above your hips, so rolling the knees toward the opposite side and turning toward the arm behind you. Take a breath, just relax. Maximize for your body, shoulders and shoulder blades down and head turning for your neck and shoulders as much as it's appropriate for you. Knees to the floor or maybe not, it depends on how your lower back wants to work. You can always put padding anywhere you need to. And again, just a few breaths here, just letting that twist happen. Exhaling any tension. So twists align and balance both body and energy, getting ready for our relaxation. So once more, hips toward or heels toward your hips, rolling onto your back, feet coming down and sliding out, arms near your sides into corpse position. And just move around on that lower back, relax your shoulders and shoulder blades down to the floor, hands, palms up. Take a deep breath and let your body soften. And just as you're ready to soften and sink, just scan through your body. So we did quite a bit of hip and pelvis work today. Just let that whole area relax even more. Soften your feet, your legs, your hips, your belly, your torso, shoulders and arms. Relax your throat and jaw, face and scalp, your whole body just softening and deepening into that earthbound connection. Relax even further, let your body go. As your body grows heavy and sinks into the earth embrace, let awareness of your body release from your mind. As you let those thoughts go, other thoughts will come to your mind. Just let those thoughts release as well. No need to remember the past. No need to anticipate the future. Just breathe deep. Exhale and deepen, sinking your body, loading your mind, and just focusing inward. And as you allow your awareness to find the peace within, just fill your body with peace. Fill your mind with peace. And just be peace. And of course, if you can keep relaxing even longer, feel free to do so. If it's time to get ready for the rest of your day, just begin breathing more deeply, moving your body gently as you become ready. Breathing energy and awareness back to the moment, to the room, filling your body, stretching it gently. Moving arms and legs, hands and feet, however feels good for you. And when you're ready for your final yoga hug of appreciation, just press your sitting bones towards your heels and press your back down, drawing those heels in. And then knees toward your heart. Wrap your arms around however feels good for your body, giving yourself that appreciative yoga hug, letting your body know you 
appreciate its work today and every day. And when you're ready to release, let go of your arms and feet, feet to the floor, rolling to the side, and just sitting back up and getting ready for whatever's ahead for you today. Thanks for joining me.